Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we are back again with another episode of MCOC character breakdowns. I know I have been kind of lagging behind with these, but there have been a lot of quote-unquote interesting things happening in the community recently, which obviously I felt that I uh, needed to address, as well as I will continue to do so as kind of like new developments uh, arise but for now i want to kind of like continue with the idea which this channel was made for and post useful informational videos about uh, this game interactions and characters themselves so today let's discuss wolverine x23 that's right wolverine is quite an old champion in this game i believe she was released in 2016 might be mistaken but i'm quite confident it's 2016 all in all she's still a relatively solid champion with decent damage output but obviously the time has made its mark on this character's uh, relevance and meta and she's just quite overly simplistic champion to actually serve major relevance but we're going to discuss that later and that's why we're going to jump to the next screen where i'm basically in front of an empty wall that i'm going to try and populate now with all sorts of information relating to this champion so we're going to start with the name obviously her official name uh, would be wolverine x23 version that's how it is in the game class is mutant size is small just like vast majority of the female characters main hero tags would be hero metal and x-men so she does get a uh, ability the accuracy reduction when facing Magneto, for instance. Uh, additionally, uh, hero class means that she fits uh, Nick Fury, uh, synergy bonuses, so and so forth. X-Men uh, makes her useful for certain types of events in quests. She also is a member of uh, Thunderbolts and also X-Force, so she is in all of these different groups, but Thunderbolts and X-Force do not really have any relevance uh, in any meaningful way in the game because I haven't seen or certainly do not remember any kind of like a one quest where uh, those tags actually would be required but it's still useful to know either way now let's talk about her damage now her damage would still today even be classed above average uh, it does rely on bleed quite a lot however he she is one of the first champions in the game that actually had kind of like a substitute ability where uh, if you happen to go up against a bleed immune champion then you, instead of placing bleed debuffs on opponent, gain, gain cruelty stacks upon yourself. And I believe she was actually the first and earliest example of this kind of like idea where if you are bringing in a bleed uh, reliant champion against a bleed immune champion, then you completely do not kind of get left out and dry to basically have pathetic damage output, but have, have a somewhat uh, decent substitute to your bleed damage. Obviously, ideally, you still want to use X-33 in matchups where she can inflict bleed, because that is where she gains quite large amount of her damage. Cruelty stacks are helpful, but thanks to diminishing returns and all the other stuff, they're just not as good. For instance, deep wounds extend her damage, but they cannot affect cruelty stacks. Again, as I mentioned, diminishing returns so and so forth. So ideally, to get the optimal amount of damage, obviously, you want a champion that she can bleed against. When she initially came out, she was actually quite high up there, took her base damage, I would say. But unfortunately, as the time goes, uh, and the natural kind of like power creep of any game's progression means that her damage output has dropped significantly in the standings of overall MCOC champion list. But still to this day, she maintains a relatively solid damage output and is definitely a good kind of like casual, simple, easy questing champion. Now, as opponent, she's extremely easy, basically a cake to deal with. Only kind of like defensive hindrance that she might possess at some occasion would be the regeneration that would extend this fight. And obviously, if you are up against extremely stacked version of x23 you would have problems with that regeneration and trying to damage it but at the same time you can manage her power because the less power she has the less regen she actually can heal up basically so as long as you keep her power bar low even a stacked version of x23 wouldn't kind of like be healing for incredible amounts of health so all in all she's very simple to fight off uh, against Typically, when you see in quests, you're never kind of intimidated by her. Because, uh, yeah, she's a very easy champion. No ranged special attacks. All of them can be just... Sorry, no projectile special attacks. All of them just can be outranged. And there are no away out or blocks on and so forth. So, yeah, a very simple champion to deal with. <laughs> also, Corvus Glaive charge and so forth. The most kind of like stacked Wolverine X-23, obviously, is in Labyrinth of Legends, where thanks to additional nodes on her that empathize her regeneration, she was initial kind of like big roadblock on in Labyrinth of Legends. And to this day, she's pretty much like the only fight where 
you have to have like a viable option for because that is the fight that's on pass fail basis because if you do not simply have a champion that can shut down her regeneration or can out damage it you're going to be stuck and you're not going to be able to complete that fight every other fight in labyrinth of legends can be done uh, with pretty much any champion and enough revives but if you do not have a good counter obviously against regen then you're kind of going to be stuck uh, that being said let's move on to the next uh, bit and that would be notable utility she again uh, to mention is a very uh, basic champion she effectively does two things and two things only three if you include cruelty buffs which can actually kind of situationally be useful i suppose but yeah basically uh, she's a sustainable champion so region is uh, definitely a very useful ability for any champion to have and the fact that her region is quite potent and it activates with you casually playing the game and hitting the opponent or getting hit you do not have to do anything special like hold block for x amount of time so and so forth that means that region is easily accessible and that makes her extremely user friendly as mentioned like we have champions like blade who has fantastic region but you do need to manage kind of like stand still and kind of like use your power to heal up or we have hyperion where you basically throw your level three and then again stand still to activate it or multitude of other champions who can access region typically how to perform a specific task and uh, X23 is just one of those champions that consistently, constantly can gain access to uh, healing uh, throughout the entire fight. You don't have to like get down to 15% like with Iron Man. And yeah, it is effortless and seamless because it doesn't require you to do any specific actions. So that is definitely a very kind of like useful and good thing about the champion and obviously access to bleed is quite useful especially how well it interacts with deep wounds mastery and seeing more and more nodes that kind of rely on you being able to place debuffs also for whatever reason and this kind of like baffles me quite highly her bleed debuffs are capped at five that's right you will never be able to place more than five debuffs of bleed on opponent if you place the sixth one it would simply refresh the one that would expire the earliest basically so yeah you can never uh, go past five bleed debuffs which is uh, still kind of like interesting and baffling because uh, if even if you could go higher it wouldn't exactly make the champion like a damage queen at this day and age and uh, yeah I think it's just like an outdated limitation on the champion that probably should be removed and wouldn't affect kind of like metagame at all whatsoever but it'd be like one of those small things that help champion get a tiny bit better all that being said, additional thing that she can do is obviously against bleed immune champions, she can amass quite a decent amount of cruelty stacks, and that can also enable you to, for instance, bypass buffed up lanes if you do know for a fact that you're going to be going up against a bleed immune champions. So having access to stackable buffs, and they also stack up till 5, it can be situationally useful but overall uh, it's not the most unique ability and doesn't exactly kind of like make her shine it's just another small thing that she can do and considering how brief and short her ability description is i just figured it would be worth mentioning now a uh, notable use is like today realistically uh, she still is a good champion for low uh, map aq because of the aforementioned region and relatively decent damage output and lower map alliance quests don't really require you to bring in that many kind of like specialty champions so as a generic path quest clearer she still serves uh, very well in the game because as I mentioned before, she's she has regen, she's sustainable, so you can use her with or without suicides, for instance. At the same point, uh, she's very easy to play, she's quite enjoyable to play, the damage is still a relatively uh, relevant and it definitely doesn't lag behind too much current day standards. And uh, if you acquire her early in the game, she's going to be like a fantastic general quest clearing champion for you in like a master mode or... As mentioned before low level uh, AQ map so and so forth personally for me I prefer actually x23 over original version of Wolverine and we all know that original version of Wolverine was like AQ MVP back in the day you know before 12.0 unfortunately Wolverine has never been released above a five star version however x23 is a five star currently in the game and shortly will come into the contest as a six star champion so that again is kind of like a bit baffling uh, because I consider her to be the better version of Wolverine because she has more damage, she has uh, less regen but more damage and which is something that I care for more 
to make my fight shorter and she's going to be the six star our original wolverine is actually being held back which uh, doesn't make too much sense to me but uh, hey you know it's kabam what you can do about it uh, so actually so her synergies i do not want to discuss it too long there's pretty much nothing worthwhile she has some generic synergies that uh, help to improve her stats there's synergies like the, i think old man logan that increase attack or now that was Corvus, then she has synergy with Old Man Logan where she takes uh, somewhat reduced bleed damage, but again, that is what bleed debuffs you would inflict upon yourself. So, all in all, her synergies aren't uh, game-changing or even overly notable, it's just the basic kind of like block proficiency increase, attack increase, or critical uh, increase, or something of the sort. So yeah, uh, she's overall independent champion of synergies, which can obviously be a good plus as well. So let me drop down the verdict on X23 before I showcase some gameplay of her. So unfortunately Wolverine X23, no matter how much I do like the character, is quite outdated for variant use in majority and for Act 6 so and so forth. And she doesn't hold too much value in the current meta. She isn't going to be the champion majority of the endgame players will want to rank her outside of the fact that she's fun to play and she's still like a cool, interesting champion despite the simplicity of her because hey region and bleed that's a very solid cool combination that's easy to like now uh where did that she's still better as an og wolverine and she's still available or about to be available as a six star in the game so hey that's happy days i suppose but all in all again as mentioned unfortunately i do personally believe that a wolverine is just oh too simple of a champion she does two things two things she does well does decent amount of bleed damage which overall might, lets her do decent amount of damage to your opponents and she has access to regen she has no immunities no utility at all pretty much so that's about all there is to it is a simple fun character far from the worst champion in the game but also very far from the best one overall she, many people still absolutely love her though and i can completely understand them so let's quickly jump and this is like the final map uh, or no this is 3.1 in this month uncollected and what i'm just going to showcase here is her like base damage output so as i mentioned she doesn't really have any specific synergy requirements so I just brought in a mutant synergy team along. Now I do believe I do have Suicide Master is active, so take in consideration when uh, discussing her region and damage output, because obviously poison does reduce all regeneration in game by 30%. And that is uh, what I have active due to liquid courage. At the same point, at the same point, it does increase my attack by quite a bit, and we can see that uh, that Vulture is pretty much melting away here without uh, much hassle. As mentioned before, uh, the bleed stacks are limited up to maximum 5. Quite often in many fights, especially kind of slower paced fights, it won't really be a factor, because typically you kind of like get 2 to 4 to 3 bleeds based on how often you crit and all that stuff. But uh, there will be many fights where you can be more aggressive and you consistently get infuriated by the fact that you're unable to stack more than 5 bleeds. And also unfortunately doesn't quite allow her to fully shut down opponents healing with the Despair Mastery because you need at least 7 debuffs. Now theoretically you can get up to 7 if you're running Resonate Mastery and if you parry stun the opponent. But that's obviously not going to be a very extended period of time in the fight. So let's let him drop that special too. Also her special attacks have increased chance to inflict bleed and if you do inflict bleed they have like increased duration and potency which is kind of like useful to note but uh, as you can see here she's a very kind of like simple straightforward enjoyable champ that is still good for like casual questing obviously she isn't gonna be too useful for many lanes in Act 6 because uh, as we all know at this point they are far more roster and utility specific uh, but uh, when you deal with kind of like st stuff in uncollected so and so forth she's still a uh, quite good option to just bring on your team and just go do some casual questing additionally being 2016 champion she's target for 2016 mutant uh, rank up gems which you can get from variants so quite few people actually have taken her up to rank 4 and uh, that's uh, just fine as well i think she she yeah i think <laughs> i might have mistaken her release date i probably should double check it before i upload the video but will i who knows <laughs> But uh, yeah, as an older champion in game, she at least uh, has kind of like 
manage to keep that you know uh, excitement and enjoyment and that uh, interesting fight factor because yeah who doesn't like stacking bleeds an opponent watching your own health region back up why not there's absolutely nothing wrong with that okay and here i'm gonna get wrecked by a special three because i got careless but that will also be pretty much end of today's video so let me jump back to the final scene and uh yeah so hopefully you guys made it this far if you did the then here is a little treat for you. It's a baby Yoda spitting out a frog uh, because baby Yoda apparently is all the rage currently still. Can't wait for Mandalorian season two, personally. Hope it comes soon. All that being said, uh, if you like baby Yoda, you like the video, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit all the buttons. If you did not like today's video or you do not like baby Yoda, you are welcome to show yourselves out. However, I'm gonna catch you guys next time. That's it for today. See ya.